a sense of like, like, am I accidentally hitting the wall that is only virtual versus the real one? <laughs> Where I'm like, uh oh, the camera is moving too close to the wall. Wait, <laughs> the overlap is a little confusing. <laughs> That's real. Okay, so the video, the one that you watched, that was the over the, the you had been in that space before, but you weren't in it when you watched it. Do you feel like it's? I mean, it's clearly different than watching it while you're in the space. But I feel I don't know. I guess that's the part that I'm trying to figure out is like, can you see this video without ever being in here? Like the other one, like having some physical relationship to space makes it different. Well, especially while being in it at the same time because you're looking for that overlap and where it does yeah. and where it doesn't and you want to compare. What about the fact that like as you walk around the orientation of this will change the orientation to the room? Is it disorienting? Like, is it? Yeah, because sometimes it matches up really well and you're like, okay, this makes sense, this is correct. And sometimes it doesn't and then like your brain is doing all this work to try and create the map between the virtual and the real. And like you want to have that map, right? It's there is a thing for you to do spatially with your yeah. spatial awareness, which you usually don't have. Is a thing. Uh huh. <laughs> and it's like the instant back and forth is really great because usually when you're looking at a rendered object, you might be wondering, oh, I wonder how accurate that is. Like, you're wondering mm -hmm. all these things with words in your brain instead of immediately doing it with all the non-verbal thought where you can just look back and forth instantly with that right. friction of, first, we'll consider all of these things without being able to compare immediately, and then later we can compare. Yeah. That's true. Also, it is hot. I'm going to take off this hoodie. Give me an yeah. object. Through... Like, this is not real time, but if you keep it in the right orientation, it looks like you're looking through time somehow. Like, at the museum in the future that has been completely degraded. Ooh, it's walking this way. I'm, I am compelled to walk with the camera. This part will be great. Because as it passes via this doorway, you can see like the lamination. <laughs> yes. And then it's like here. And the ceiling's all messed up. The ceiling is the hardest part to scan. Yeah, it's funny how the scanner can oh, just reach the lower part. Missing object. So the bench is completely bench. missing. Was the bench just not there last time, I guess? I think I was sitting in the middle of it when I was doing the scanning, <laughs> so I just missed. And you just patched the floor. Yeah, I just patched all the floors together, so. It's always convenient when the fake humans are in the same place <laughs> as the humans. Wow, that's kind of awesome. We weren't a little like that. Oh, this is so cool. It's more social this way too. Yeah. Except for that it just looks like you're trying to take a picture. Oh like, right. <laughs> so the, to no one who's someone who's not the two of us, it seems like we're trying to take pictures. Or currently in some strange three D scan mode. Um, or computer vision space tracking software. Interesting, the field of view of the camera makes there's something whoosh. Right, it would be clear that you're not actually taking a picture if you think about the field of view. Yeah, but that takes a lot more like looking at it and concentrating and stuff. Well, that's a thing. Yep. <laughs> 